So here we have our Hyundai Ioniq Electric. This is a 2017 car, it's done 102,000 miles now. And in this video, we're gonna look at the traction battery life. So when EVs first came out, it was uh, said many times by an awful lot of people that batteries would only last two or three years and you'd have to throw them away and that battery that sits under there would then go to landfill and EVs just weren't viable. However, manufacturers were putting five-year warranties on their battery packs. Most EV manufacturers now are putting seven or eight-year warranties on their packs and they warranty it to 75% capacity. However, of course, batteries have got to perform a lot better than that, otherwise they would be in for all these warranty claims. So this vehicle's done 102,000 miles and I've done videos about the battery on this and this battery is actually at 100% state of health. It hasn't lost a bean in 102,000 miles. So I've got the um, diagnostic scanner plugged into the diagnostic port down there and uh, if I just scroll down I'm looking at the live data here from the battery pack all the cell voltages temperatures and looking at all the information you can see about the battery pack with a diagnostic scanner and somewhere down here we've got state of health there it is it is still at 100% state of health so these Generation 1 Hyundai Ioniq electrics have a 30.5 kilowatt hour battery pack under the floor there. And that's total capacity. And of that, 28 kilowatt hours is usable by the driver. And that's why they're called the 28 kilowatt hour models. And uh, I've done videos about this car before and many people have said, you know, that's just not right. There is no way that the car has still retained 100% of its battery capacity. Uh, even though I have proved that. So I'm going to do that again on this video. Um, but I think this is showing 100% of the usable capacity. So quite possibly a bit of the total capacity has dropped because the battery management system, the BMS, that's the ECU in the battery pack, which looks after the battery pack for you, that keeps a little bit at the bottom and a little bit at the top that you can't access as a driver. So when the battery goes flat, as it is now, uh, you can see there it's only showing 1% because I've purposely drained this one. Um, it isn't actually at 1%. Uh, it's usually at about 5%. And when you charge, it's again at about 95%, even though it says it's 100%. So that's how it works. EVs keep a little bit of the battery pack uh, aside that you can't access just to prolong the life of the pack. However, in this particular case, I've just recorded a video over the last few days on how long an EV will sit stranded with it running with the heater on. And this has been running for two and a half days uh, with the heating on in the winter. And I did run it to completely flat. And so I'm now filming this video on the back of this one. So it was saying 0% on the screen. It's now plugged in on the granny cable. But when I looked here at the scanner, the state of charge was only 1%. It's now 2.5% because it is charging at the moment. Um, and I've never taken a battery as low as that, so it's not ideal. But um, anyway, not too worried on this because the battery's great on this car. But, um, and this is the first time this has uh, been abused like this in its six years of life. So in this case, what I'm going to do, because the battery is so flat, I'm just putting a bit of power in now, which I'm about to disconnect, just so I can drive it over to the wall charger. I'm going to charge this overnight and measure how much electricity I get back into it. And anything over 28 kilowatt hours basically proves that it's still got 100% of its usable capacity. There will be a bit of charging loss, uh, so I've got to count for that. That's difficult to know exactly how much losses are through the charging um, circuit but basically anything over 28 um, maybe plus five percent or something is going to prove that this battery still has 100 percent capacity so as i'm about to plug this in now it is showing two percent on the dash let me just go into the ev menu yeah there two percent and on the scanner it's showing the battery is at 3.5 percent state of charge so I'm going to plug in now on our wall box. Well, we've got two here, wall box chargers, and these are seven kilowatt. And on the app with these, you can look at how much energy has been used. 
and I'll be charging on cheap rate overnight electricity on the Octopus Go tariff so I'll be back in the morning. So it's the following morning, let's unlock this and have a look at the battery. If you like this sort of video, please do click that thumbs up button on YouTube. That really does help. Oh, that's locked in again. Let's unlock that. Um, this channel gets very low viewing numbers and even though there's 14,000 subscribers currently, most videos are getting less than a thousand views. So hitting that like button and subscribing really does help the channel. Unfortunately, I've discovered that my wall box charger here isn't recording the consumption. So if I look at this month, I've got no record of January, but there is in December. Uh, so I don't know what's wrong. There has been two software updates recently, so I can only imagine one of the recent software updates has stopped this recording. Because if I quickly jump to the bottom one, lower one, Yeah, the lower charger is showing use in January. So I don't know what's wrong. It's unfortunate I plugged into that one and not that one. So I can't look at the total energy used to charge the vehicle last night. That's a shame. But anyway, I'm gonna plug in the scanner again. That's just booting up there and uh, have a look at the battery pack in detail. And as you can see, it is now fully charged. So, Let's go to Diagnostic and let's just straighten up a bit. We can then select just the BMS ECU and then let that scan the ECU. What we're going to do is just look at the live data because the car's obviously switched on and we can look at all the stats from the battery pack and what i'm going to look at is all the cell voltages and everything i'll show you every screen let me just see if i can zoom up on that and try to hold the camera so that's sort of square um so our state of charge is 95 percent and let's just have a look here let's just zoom back out yeah showing 100 percent on the screen so that's that uh, five percent buffer that it uh, keeps that you can't access and then we can scroll through some of this stuff so the voltage is 396 volts maximum battery temperature is 10 degrees minimum temperature is 8 degrees and currently it is 6 degrees outside the car thinks so the battery is a bit warmer than the ambient temperature and then we could look at the temperatures of the individual cells and they're all nine degrees that one is 10 but this doesn't have decimal points so that could be 9.9 .9 and 10.0 you don't know um, battery inlet temperature eight degrees so maximum cell voltage 4.12 maximum cell number that's showing you which number has the maximum voltage and that's jumping between all of them Minimum cell voltage, 4.12. So that shows all the cells are equal. Minimum cell number, cell number one is the one with the minimum. Fan status, naught because the fan's not running. Um, auxiliary battery voltage, that's the 12 volt battery up front. That's showing 14.5 volt because that is currently being charged. So that's the voltage from the DC to DC converter accumulated charge current that must be the total amount of current uh, put into the battery during charging discharge current total amount that's come out total amount of power total amount of discharge power the amount of operating time in seconds um, and then we've just got some on and off information because we're looking at real-time data here so uh, inverter the capacity inverter capacity voltage 396 volts uh, motor speed nor rpm because we're not moving isolation resistance a thousand kilo ohms don't know what that should be um, but this is where you can sort of see the state of health of your battery and whether the battery is nicely balanced because we've got the cell voltages 
and we can see they're 4.12 volts every single one I hope is 4.12 volts so that is the sign of a very healthy battery pack even after 102,000 miles look at that they're all absolutely identical then we've got some more temperatures they're all eight and nine degrees C available charge power 42 kilowatt available discharge power 98 kilowatt um, got some more temperatures battery state of health 100% which I showed you yesterday and uh, so yeah that's what you can see when you look at a battery pack with a scanner on the Ionic so all indications are that is a very very healthy battery and just goes to show that batteries do last in an electric vehicle so next uh, range many people ask well has the range dropped well the range will only drop if your fuel tank is smaller so if your battery pack capacity reduces then that drops your range reduces your range by that percentage this does, still does exactly the same amount of range as it did when it was new we've got 135 miles on the clock there as an estimate uh, that is wrong at the moment that's just because I was doing this um, discharge test over the last few days so if I look at um, charging history we can see there that the miles per kilowatt hour is very low because I was um, drain using the heater and draining the battery and not driving so that would have thrown out the algorithm to uh, predict the range there but even in winter in this car we can see here december it was very cold december here still getting four and a half miles per kilowatt hour in the winter with the heating on and 4.5 miles per kilowatt hour times 28 kilowatt hours is 126 miles and we're getting easily that and more in the winter and if we go down here looking further back in november 4.8 4.3 4.7 4.9 5.1 this is all winter driving we're getting sort of at least 5.5 maybe 6 maybe 6.5 in the summer and uh, that's giving us a realistic range of about 160 miles in the summer so this is still doing exactly what it would have done when new you also don't get any loss of performance with an electric vehicle as the battery degrades not that obviously this one has degraded the motor performance stays the same the motor power stays the same unlike a combustion engine which will slowly lose power as the mechanical components wear that doesn't happen in EV it's purely down to the size of that fuel tank which in an electric vehicle obviously is your battery pack so what I find on average typically with used electric vehicles is they only lose about 1% of battery capacity per year or less in the case of a Hyundai Ionic obviously less uh, that is unless it's a Nissan typically the Nissan Leaf and the Nissan ENV 200 lose about 3% a year that is because they don't have active cooling on their battery packs but all other electric vehicles 1% a year or less and in many cases less and the reality is your typical day-to-day -day driving will vary more than that 1% so you don't notice any loss in range until the vehicle gets much older and often you wouldn't have owned it from new to that date i.e much older you know even when a vehicle is 10 years old you're still looking at less than 10 percent loss of range from that battery pack so battery degradation really isn't the worry that many people seem to think it is so i think that's about all i can show you uh, on this video at least i've shown you all the information you get with a diagnostic scanner here and showing you the state of the health of the battery pack obviously this sort of information isn't available to the driver um, but at well there's the exact mileage actually it's not quite 102 101,670 miles and um, six years old this battery is still as good as it was when it was new so that's it if you found this video useful please do click that thumbs up button on youtube that really does help do subscribe as well and also have a look at the back catalogue of videos on the channel 
I've been on YouTube now for seven years, I think, and there are hundreds and hundreds of videos on the channel. So use the search function and have a look at those. And if you're interested in Ionics, there's quite a lot of videos on there about the Ionic EV. Okay, I'll see you on the next video.